Hi, my name is Rachel Kowal, and I have a master's degree in exercise physiology from Northern Illinois University. I conducted a research study on physical activity history and severity of vasomotor symptoms in menopausal females as my directed research. Significance. Estrogen influences the thermal regulation of the human body. Accompanied by the loss of estrogen, the onset of menopause can cause disruptive vasomotor symptoms. Vasomotor symptoms present intense physical and psychological discomfort for women, including a sudden feeling of warmth spreading through the upper body, a flushed appearance, rapid heart rate, perspiration, and anxiety. As much as 80% of menopausal females report hot flushes. Hot flushes can, on average, last five years, and more than one-third women experience moderate to severe hot flushes for up to 10 years post-menopause. Previous research explores exercise as a natural treatment option to reduce vasomotor symptoms, but few studies look for activity levels and intensity to predict the severity of vasomotor symptoms. Exploring correlations in types of exercise and the severity of vasomotor symptoms might change how we prescribe exercise to healthy women in a menopause transition. Purpose. The purpose of the study was to investigate the associations between physical activity levels in the fourth decade and the severity of hot flushes in menopausal and postmenopausal females. Methodology. 101 females ages 41 to 79 with a mean age of 57 were recruited on social media and local fitness studios to complete an online survey. Females were included in this project if they were in any phase of menopause transition or postmenopausal. The questionnaire required subjects to rate 12 different menopausal symptoms on a five category Likert scale, ranging from none to very severe. The participants were asked to self report and recall their activity levels in minutes per week and categorize their activity by intensity rankings. Subjects self-reported their exercise intensity as vigorous, moderate, or low physical activity during each decade of their life. Subjects' total activity minutes from the fourth decade was categorized into quartiles in SPSS, and subjects were grouped as low to total activity, moderate total activity, high total activity, and very high total activity. Pearson correlation coefficient was used to investigate relationships between volume of exercise, intensity of exercise, and severity of hot flushes. Results. When results were analyzed, this study demonstrated a statistically significant positive relationship between very high volume of moderate activity and severity of hot flushes. It was evidence that the women who participated in a very high volume of moderate activity per week had a greater severity of hot flushes, with an R value of 0.526 and a P value of 0 0.007. Discussion. Previous research shows reactive oxygen nitrogen species can result from a variety of stressors, such as exposure to environmental pollutants, excessive nutrient intake, or physical exercise. Epidemiological data suggests that disease risk decreases as a function of aerobic exercise up to a certain point, at which the disease risk begins to increase, suggesting an optimal level of exercise may exist. Oxidative stress appears connected to the relationship between disease and exercise. In other research, there was a positive correlation with vasomotor symptom severity and oxidative stress. Reduction in estradiol, E2, has been shown to increase the oxidative stress in the body because E2 presents antioxidative properties. This alters the delicate balance between free radical production and their neutralization. The significant finding in this study suggests that there is a maximum level of moderate intensity physical activity females can engage to attenuate severe vasomotor symptoms during menopause. Hot flushes are the most distressing symptom for females of menopause transition. This finding shows further research is necessary to improve exercise guidelines for menopausal women. Limitations and future investigations. Limitations of this study include a small sample size, broadly defined examples of exercise intensities, and lack of self-reported pro-oxidant covariates such as alcohol use, ob obesity, and smoking. Longitudinal intervention studies may host a greater insight 
for the effects of different modalities and associated severity of hot flushes.